Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton, and today I'm going to talk to you about the number one way to reverse brain fog and prevent age-related declines in cognitive ability that lead to dementia as we get older. If you're interested in preserving your brain health and operating at your absolute best, this video is for you. I'm going to talk to you about why magnesium is super important for brain health, and in particular, why magnesium L3 innate is the preferred formulation when it comes to supplementing magnesium and sharpening your mental focus and acuity. Then I'm going to give you the data on how effective magnesium L3 innate is for optimizing brain functioning, as well as some interesting research on how it's been used as part of a comprehensive program to actually reverse even mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, which is essentially an otherwise incurable condition. Then I'm going to tell you about other conditions that magnesium L3 and 8 is good for and wrap up with some great action tips so that you can put this to use in your own life. So let's dig right in. Now, why is magnesium so important for brain health? It's because it's an essential component of the neural cell membrane, in particular, the NMDA receptor, which is ubiquitous in brain neuron cells. And what we're going to see is that without adequate levels of magnesium, your brain cells, your neuro neuron cells actually just cannot function at their optimal, and they're at risk for premature death. So here's a picture of an NDMA receptor. And as you can see, there's a magnesium ion that actually sits like a lock and key mechanism inside that receptor. So what happens is, as you have neural signals in the brain, they're looking to see whether or not that magnesium is in that receptor or whether it's been dislodged with a uh, signal transmission. Now, once that magnesium is relieved from blocking that membrane, calcium can enter the cell and the cell is essentially depolarized. Now, that lock and key mechanism is essential for cellular functioning because without it, what happens is that pore remains open and the cell can get excited to the point where it's no longer functioning or can actually die because of excess depolarization. So magnesium acts to not only regulate neural cell functioning, but also to protect those cells from premature death. Now here, this curve may be a little bit hard to interpret, but basically what you see is that as the voltage across the cell membrane increases from left to right, the amperage, which is the uh, conduction across that um, cell membrane, stays pretty flat when you have magnesium. So this upper curve here is the magnesium and what it's doing is it's it's keeping that cell from depolarizing until we get to a certain voltage and then boom we open the channel and conduction can occur now you see that without the magnesium as soon as you start changing the voltage across that cell membrane the current starts to flow now we don't want that to happen because it means that the cell is being excited prematurely and Interestingly, when we think about the drugs that we use to treat certain conditions, we've got amantadine for Parkinson's disease, we've got felbamate for seizures, and importantly, we've got bamantine, which is Namenda, and that is a FDA-approved treatment for dementia. And it, these drugs all act on the same channel that magnesium does. They regulate the same receptor in the same way, which means that a lot of times when we think about taking a prescription medication for certain disorders of brain health, we're really treating magnesium deficiency and wouldn't it make more sense to just replace that magnesium? Now with this in mind, we may want to go out there and look for a magnesium uh, supplement that we want to take for brain health. And there's a ton of options out there. There's easily a dozen different formulations of magnesium bound to different anions that create a salt and you know there's a lot to choose from now some of them we want to stay away from if we're looking at brain health right i mean magnesium citrate is essentially a laxative right so you know we're going to end up with having a lot of loose stools which is you know a different application but if we want something that is designed specifically for brain health out of this whole ecosystem of magnesium supplements we want to go for the magnesium l3 and 8 now, what is magnesium L3 innate? It is a 
magnesium ion that is bound to a metabolite of vitamin C. And that magnesium L3 innate is preferentially going across the blood-brain barrier, concentrating in the brain exactly where we want it with minimal side effects, no loose stools, no diarrhea, and it's going exactly where we want it to preferentially block those NMDA receptors and improve our cognitive ability. Now, the recommended daily intake is about 400 milligrams a day. It varies a little bit between men and women, but what we're going to see is that even higher levels, up to about 2,000 milligrams a day, can really do a lot to improve cognitive ability. Now, magnesium is generally ubiquitous in the food supply, and there's a lot of places that we can get it. Now, some high magnesium foods are spinach and dark green vegetables, nuts like almonds, dark chocolate, beans, chia seeds, quinoa. And, you know, if we look at any food, it's going to have some amount of magnesium. But these are the high magnesium foods that we want to think about if we're going to get magnesium from the diet. Now, the interesting thing is that when we look at information from the NHANES survey of dietary intake across Americans, what we see is that people aren't getting their magnesium from kale and they're not getting it from chard or almonds. They're getting it from these sources. I mean, the top source of magnesium in the NHANES survey was milk. And after that comes coffee and beer, bananas and French fries. So when you think about the fact that French fries made it to the top five sources of magnesium, it really gives you some sense that moving our dietary intake to include some of these high magnesium foods might be a really easy way to boost our general intake of magnesium and potentially improve brain function. So now let's look at some of the data on magnesium and in particular magnesium L3 innate when it comes to improving brain health and other neurologic conditions. So this is a study that was done on the N. Haynes group from 2011 to 2014, which you know is a survey of the dietary intake and the health of Americans. And what we do is we compare the cognitive processing ability of people based on how much magnesium they have in the diet. And what you see is that for people who had over 400 milligrams of magnesium a day, just reaching that USRDA basically, they had a five times better cognitive ability and processing power relative to people who were in the lowest quartile of magnesium intake. So if you think about the fact that the average American is getting somewhere in that 200 to 300 milligram of magnesium intake, we're all operating at a level that's far below where we would be if we were getting adequate levels of magnesium in the brain where we need it. Five times better cognition scores relative to those with the lower intake of magnesium. And here we're looking at another really interesting placebo-controlled trial of magnesium L3 and 8 in healthy adults looking at how it improves their cognitive ability. So the score we're looking at here is a memory quotient. And as you can see, the baseline between both groups was roughly equivalent at exactly 60 on the scoring chart. Now, when we administer two grams of magnesium L3 and 8 daily, what we see is a huge increase in cognitive ability relative to the placebo group. Now, this is a chart of the different cognitive scores that we were looking at, but you can see paired association learning, free recall of pictures, portrait features memory. So different ways of challenging the brain to recall and process recent memories. And what we see is 40%, 60%, 50% increases in cognitive ability. And the baseline memory quotient that was the same in both groups at 60 has now increased 36% to over 81% on that same scoring scale. And here's a chart showing the placebo versus treatment groups. And what you can see is that the placebo group in white just didn't go at all, right? I mean, it's same before and after, and we're talking about 30 days of treatment with magnesium L3 and eight, two grams a day, giving you these massive increases in cognitive ability. So, Looking at another graph, a different trial, what we see here is that magnesium L3 and 8 gives you a 60% bump in cognitive processing speed and executive function. 
and you see that the two curves, placebo versus magnesium L3 and 8, diverge at six weeks. And then at 12 weeks, what you see is this massive 60% difference between placebo and magnesium L3 and 8. Um, and then I like this graph because this one's really interesting. We're looking now at magnesium L3 and 8 in terms of the impact in cognitive ability, but basing it on this premise that you're starting to lose cognitive ability right after age 40 or 50 at the rate of about 1% per year. And based on that kind of scoring assumption, what you see is that after six to 12 weeks of magnesium L3 and 8 supplementation, you're actually reversing that age-related decline by about 10 years. So if you're thinking, gosh, you know what, my brain just isn't working as well at age 50 or 60 as it was at 40 or 50, taking two grams of magnesium L3 and 8 daily can quickly improve your cognitive functioning so that you feel that much younger. Really cool stuff. Um, and then I'm going to finish out my uh, discussion of cognitive ability with this paper from 2014. And this is pulled from Dr. Dale Bredesen's work on preventing and treating Alzheimer's disease. So this is some really good stuff. And uh, Dr. Bredesen has published this paper showing how a comprehensive program of diet, nutrition, supplementation, uh, exercise can actually reverse moderate to, or sorry, mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. And in this paper, he talks about 10 patients with moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease and nine out of 10 actually went back to basically normal. So they had not been able to work, not been able to function, and they regained near complete functional ability, essentially reversing an incurable condition. I'll leave a link to this paper. It's a great read. But the important thing is that as part of this comprehensive program, he emphasizes the two grams of magnesium L3 and 8, and out of all of the different formulations of magnesium, uh, he picks that magnesium L3 and 8. So I think it really underscores the utility of having something that preferentially crosses the blood-brain barrier and is targeted to getting magnesium into those N NDMA receptors where they can do their job. Um, and I'll also put a link here in the card showing you another video where Dr. Bredesen talks about his um, 10 favorite supplements for improving brain health and magnesium L3 and 8 is of course one of them. But I think this is a good video to watch too if you're interested in improving your cognitive health. Now moving on to a couple other applications of magnesium L3 and 8 because I thought this was really interesting is this study was done on magnesium L3 and 8 versus placebo in cancer patients with severe pain. So these are patients who really need good pain management alternatives. And in this study, what you see is that by 90 days of the trial, that magnesium was magnesium L3 and 8 was actually equivalent to 20 milligrams of morphine in pain control, which is absolutely crazy that you think about taking magnesium for three months can actually have the same impact in terms of pain management as 20 milligrams of morphine. Nearly unbelievable. And then we look at anxiety. This study looked at, again, 300 milligrams of magnesium, a much lower dose, but comparing it to Ativan or lorazepam, which is a commonly prescribed medication for treating anxiety. And what we see is that after six weeks of magnesium, you're getting equivalent reductions in anxiety, statistically significant reductions in anxiety, equivalent to first two milligrams of Ativan and then three milligrams of Ativan. They did the study first on the two milligram dose, found it to be equivalent, and they said, let's try it at three milligrams, which is a fairly significant dose of Ativan. And they said, it's still roughly equivalent. So no difference between the treatment groups, magnesium versus Ativan and it works up to about three milligrams of Ativan. And then lastly, magnesium is a well-known treatment for preventing and treating migraine headaches, and I thought this was interesting showing that magnesium in a dose of about 500 milligrams was equivalent to Depakote, another commonly prescribed treatment to prevent migraines, at a dose of 400 milligrams. So among these studies, what you're seeing is that number one, we don't really have any good treatments for dementia. Very few medications do anything other than slow the decline in cognition. 
And what we just saw is that magnesium L3 and 8 not only does better than that, it actually improves your cognitive ability. I mean, we saw a five times increase. We saw a 60% increase. We saw a 36% increase in cognitive ability, processing power, and memory from magnesium. So more powerful than prescription medications for treating brain fog, dementia, and improving cognitive ability. And then we saw data showing that it's as equivalent to 20 milligrams of morphine for pain, three milligrams of Ativan for anxiety, and 400 milligrams of Depakote for preventing migraines. Magnesium is as powerful or more powerful than a lot of prescription medications and commonly prescribed medications for conditions that may be linked to deficiencies in magnesium. Okay, so what are the key takeaways from this video? Number one, magnesium is phenomenal for brain health and most people are deficient. So if you're worried about brain fog or age-related declines in me memory and cognitive ability, highly recommend supplementing with magnesium. When you're looking for magnesium supplementation for brain health, go with magnesium L3 and 8. The data is compelling and the mechanism of crossing the blood-brain barrier is solid. So if you're worried about brain health, you want to go with a formulation, magnesium L3 and 8, that's preferentially designed to cross the blood-brain barrier. The usual dose, anywhere from 400, 500 milligrams a day, all the way up to 2,000 milligrams. I would recommend going with a 2,000 milligram dose. Magnesium is safe and well-tolerated, and you want to make sure that you've got enough in there to really saturate those receptors. Now, when you start taking magnesium, it may take up to 6 to 12 weeks to see the benefits. We just looked at the data, and it's going to take that much time, so you want to stick with it. And you want to recall that when you're taking the magnesium, you need it up there to circulate and um, saturate those receptors. If you stop taking it, the benefits will dissipate. So give it 6 to 12 weeks, but then remember that as you're starting to see those benefits, you want to keep it handy and make sure you keep taking it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're looking for more great content on how to improve your health naturally and without medications, check out this next video, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.